Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, we're starting another um, section of this um, program. This is um, part two of this program. Um, this is a business analysis. In the last um, two weeks, we have been um, working on project management. We've done a lot. We've done a lot of practicals. And what I gave you guys in project management is what we, what can get you started as a young project manager, as a junior project manager, as you keep growing. You need to still uh, keep expanding your knowledge about project management and uh, and that's it. But with what you have, you can confidently uh, apply for job as a, a project manager, but I wouldn't advise you to rush into the market for now until we finish our um, real life experience, real life project management. Uh, that will help you equally so that you won't um, struggle. But this week, we are starting business analysis. Um, business analysis is very, very uh, key uh, to every organization. It helps organization to, to drive growth, it make informed decision, manage their resources, uh, find out their problems, resolve their problems, compete very well, have quality time to market. And there is a lot uh, good business analysis, um, understanding or strategies or can, can do to the organization, can give them, you know, powerful insights about their, their, their data, understanding their data very well, using their data, you know, turn their data into, into opportunities. You know, these are things a business analysis can do. There's a lot. So let's get started. Um, we have a, a table of contents on how we are going to achieve our deliverables in this, uh, in this uh, module. Um, introduction, I've, uh, you guys already know me. There's no need of uh, introducing myself again. And what we need to do now is to uh, properly go into the introduction to a business analysis. And from there, we keep rolling. So we are going to look into the introduction to business analysis. We're going to look at the definition and the importance of business analysis. And other things will keep moving from here. So I will read this definition as it is stated in the IIBA. IIBA is a very powerful organization that is uh, um, controlling the, the knowledge and activities of business analysis, a body of knowledge the kind of uh, business analysis. Um, they are regulating the business analysis body of knowledge, just like uh, IPM is, uh, is, the, is regulating the, the body of knowledge of project management. For now, we recognize IIB as the, the authority. There are so many other organizations, but this is where we'll be um, drawing our references, you know, most of the things will be um, 
uh, looking into will be centering on this um, body, which at the end of the day, I will give you people uh, full text. Everybody will need to, it's something I will equally need to share to you guys free of charge. I have it and it's like a Bible in a business analysis. According to IIBA, business analysis is the practice of enabling change in an enterprise by defining need and recommending solution that delivers value to stakeholders. Business analysis enables an enterprise to articulate needs and the rationale for change and to design and describe solution that can deliver value. That's what business analysis is all about. It's about finding out the, 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 the company need, the organization need, the stakeholders need, what is their problem, call it problem statements. Then you find a suitable solution to solve that their problem. And that is what you, that is your role as a business analyst. In an organization, they will tell you their problem. As an experienced uh, business analyst, you look for what is causing this solution. That is a, call it a root cause analysis at times, but not all the time you do root cause analysis as a business analyst. But most of the time you need to do root cause analysis. When you find root cause analysis, then you find out suitable solution to, to, to tackle the problem. Root cause analysis is a strategic we are solving company uh, problem. At times, so many people just um, use tactical solution. Tactical solution is the immediate solution to a problem. You are solving the, the, the problem from the periphery. But if you, are, you want to really um, bring a permanent solution or strategic solution, you need to look beyond tactical solution. And that is a strategic solution. So that's what we'll be doing as a business analysis. Very powerful. And uh, I think with this uh, brief explanation, you will understand the scope of a business analysis. What you'll be expected to do as a business analyst. You are in a company to bring change, to solve uh, problems for them, business solution, uh, using technologies. Yeah. So these are the things you put at the back of your head that this is you, what you will be doing. A business analyst is a, is a good researcher. You do a lot of research. When company have problem, you need to research the best solution in the market within their budget as well. And within the time frame needed to solve that problem. So these are the things. You might have a solution that might be very good uh, to solve a problem, but it's not within the company's budget and is not uh, within the timeline. It can be given. Um, uh, to um, six months to sort out a problem. And you, you might see a very good uh, solution, but it will take like um, one year to implement that solution. You see, it's not, gonna, it's not going to be a solution to that because of the timeline. So these are the things why a business analyst uh, have to research very well to get the best product within the, the company's resources and use it to solve their, their problems. We'll look into the why business analysis is important. Business analysis, analysis are 
agents of change as they introduce, manage, facilitate uh, necessary changes to, to your business model. So as like I said, yeah, they are agents of change. All they do is uh, facilitate change, bring solution. They collaborate with uh, uh, stakeholders is very key because it's the stakeholders that uh, you are working for. So collaboration with stakeholders is very, very important as a business anal an analyst, you know. If, if you don't have good uh, relationship with uh, stakeholders, then it's going to be difficult as a business um, analyst. So stakeholder management continues. It's not a one-off um, something. You continue to, to work with your stakeholders. A business analyst lowers cost. No, to reduce project uh, uh, costs, try to, to be cost effective, uh, implement a, a cost effective solution, looking at a uh, company's uh, budget to give them what um, a valuable solution within the, the budget. And you increase the return on investment, every company uh, that invested uh, needs a uh, return back on their investment. That's why people are buying stocks, people are putting their money in companies so that they will get the return back. Uh, business analysts uh, with your skills is either you reduce cost of operation or you implement uh, improvement on the system that can drive change, you know, increase uh, revenue, increase costs, uh, make customers happy, drive more sales. And that will definitely uh, increase the cost, increase the, I mean, the, the, the profitability of the company. And that's bringing a good return on investment. The cost of implementation yeah, should be, be very low. As a business, and when you are implementing a solution, you have to look at the cost of implementation. Just like I've said, it's very, very key. It's not about um, bringing customers. You need, you need to equally look at the cost of implementation, the overhead cost, reduce it very low. Is a way of saving companies, um, saving company money, money. This is uh, where lean methodology comes. Lean methodology helps company to reduce cost. So many organizations now they are looking for business ana analysts that are very good using uh, Six Sigma and lean methodology because these are the ways you can reduce cost for companies. You know, if, even if company is not uh, making a, a, a enough sales from their customer, it's very key that they reduce the cost of operation. And all these things lies in the hands of uh, a good business analyst. Ensure projects are set by, you know, as a, if, if, if the, the, there is no good, uh, Product requirements. The, the product, the, the, the project is is bound to suffer. As a business, as a business analyst, it's your duty to make sure that you understand the the company's problem very well. And when you gather the right requirements, then you help to 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 make the project move smoothly because the the. The requirement is very clear. Everybody understands the requirement. Even the developers we are working with, they understand what is the problem because it's you, the business analyst, when you gather the requirement from the uh, stakeholders, you translate it into technical requirement. 
you have two languages here, business requirements and technical requirements. We are going to spend a lot of time um, looking at uh, on these requirements. So the duty of a uh, business analyst, you crisscrossing from business requirements to technical requirements. You gather information from the uh, stakeholders. What is their need? Then the developers don't understand the, the, the business requirement. So you break it down, transform it into technical requirement, and then the developers can work on it, uh, you know, and transform it into business need uh, that will satisfy the, uh, the customers, you know. So that's how you trans transfer, uh, translate business need into technical requirements and then into solution that will solve customers uh, problem and make them happy to, to stay back with you or to, to re recommend you to other customers. So that's why business analysis is very important. Um, at this stage, Because um, I know a lot of people might uh, struggle. I want to use a case study at this early stage to, to paint a picture of what business analysis is so that you will be able to, to catch up fast and understand the what business analysis is. So the, the case study we are going to look here is um, the problem a real uh, estate company is facing. You know, it takes this uh, real estate company longer time to resolve customer's complaint. And uh, this customer's complaint is uh, fixing of uh, defective boilers, you know? Like here um, in UK, is a, a very key issue. Everybody uses boiler. So boiler is one of the most uh, valuable uh, whom uh, appliance or equipment or, or resources. So everybody uses boiler. So when a boiler breaks down for one day and is not fixed, it's a big issue. It's a serious matter. More especially now we are in winter. So you can't, the, the, the boiler is defective. You can't, you, can't, you can't hit the house, you can't boil water, you can't bath. And it's a serious matter. So, and when it takes um, a company, like a real estate company, they are struggling to, to resolve this kind of uh, complaint. They are going to lose customers, you know. It's capable of bringing a company down. And this is a real problem. This is what this company is facing. You know, they have a lot of backlogs. People are complaining. A lot of uh, backlog about uh, defective uh, boilers. So now they are looking for solution for their problem. And now they are looking for a business analyst that will help them to resolve this problem. And they hire you as a business analyst to look into their matter. So now as a business analyst, you join this company, now they tell you that their problem is um, how to solve this problem. It's taking them longer time to resolve comp uh, customer's complaint within their company, which is their real estate. 
So what are you going to do as a business analyst? These are the issues. These are what you are going to face. If you get a job as a business analyst, these are the things you are going to expect. These are what you are going to be, the kind of problem, real life problem you are going to be solving. So how do we start? The first thing you need to do is um, you need to find out how they've been running this their business. You know, you need to understand how they have been solving this problem because it's not um, the problem that uh, fixing defective boilers in real estate company is a common issue. So it's not a new problem. So they must have been doing this. So how have they been doing it? And they get to this stage that they can't cope again. They need to understand how they've been doing it. And what you need to do is you facilitate um, a meeting with the stakeholders to gather your requirement. We call it requirement gathering or data collection. So in the process of uh, gathering your data on trying to document the, the current way of doing their business, that is current state. What you call it current state or as is, as it is now, that you call it as is. These are technical, all these things are technical jargons in business analysis. So once you become a business, all you'll be hearing is uh, a cease to be. So once you hear a cease, you know that it's currently, how is it happening before you look into the um, solution? So now what you, you need to do is you have to find out what is happening. So when you, you, you engage the the, the technical, um, the, the subject matter expert in the, in the companies, uh, the stakeholders during the requirement gathering or data collection, you gather your requirements. And what you gather is this, on this particular uh, issue, the way they're doing it. The first thing you do is that you identify from what you gather, the way they do things, that you identify and report incidents. When the customer reports 40 incidents, like a defective boiler, they are reporting it to the help desk officer. The help desk receive and log this incident and then contacts the landlord. When they contact the landlord, you can see the arrow. This is landlord. Landlord will receive the complaint and review the, review the complaint. Then landlord will approve. Okay, let's um, um, resolve the issue. Landlord will approve. And then the approval will return to help desk. The help desk receive approval from landlord and notify the plumber. The plumber is the person that is going to um, sort out the defective boiler. And then the plumber went on site. So the plumber, if you that are the person complaining, the plumber will come to your house to see the defective boiler because the plumber cannot just uh, come. The plumber will come and find out actually what is going on. So plumber went on site, visit to assess the incident. And when the plumber uh, finished assessing the problem, the plumber picks these papers from the company uh, storeroom. And then the plumber will go back 
plumber will fix the, the faulty unit. And then after that, plumber will test, functional test to make sure that it's working. And if it's working, then the plumber will write, do the paperwork that he'll finish his job and then send it to help desk officer. And then the help, help desk officer will then notify the customer that the plumber uh, really um, say that the job is done if he will fix the, and if the, the, um, the help desk will then confirm that actually the plumber have fixed the, the incident. And that will be the end of the, the process. You can see that it's a long process. It takes all this long time to fix a defective boiler for a company. So that's why they are they're having a lot of backlog. It's either they keep employing they employ more plumbers. And if they, they, they keep employing more plumbers, they might not have enough money to pay all these plumbers. So it becomes a problem to work with the existing plumbers. There is um, too much workload for them. They can't handle the, the workload. So it's a problem, big problem. So now you, the business analyst, you have documented the current state. So these are what we are going to be doing. Like um, what you, are, you see this uh, flow um, process map. We call it, this diagram you're seeing here is called process map. I introduce you people to lucid charts and the draw.io and the visio in um, project management. So you already have, when you are doing your project breakdown structure. So, these are what we are going to be doing. And we need to use uh, flow charts. Um, um, need a, you need to use a, um, a lucid charts or draw.io to map out this uh, flow chart. So this is what you, you do as a business analyst. When you map it out, this is now you have a clear picture of what is going on in this organization. When you map it out, then the next thing you do, you have to analyze the, this map, the process. The first thing you've gathered your requirement. When you gather your requirement, you map it out like this. So now you've gathered your requirement. The next thing is uh, a requirement analysis. You need to analyze this requirement you've gathered now in order to solve this problem. You need, the problem now is to reduce the time it takes to solve, to fix each defective unit. So because as you can see, it takes a lot, a lot of time, it takes longer time. This can take like, from what we are seeing now, it can take like um, 10 days, which is a lot. How can we reduce this time? Maybe even reduce this to, to five days. These are the things we'll be looking at. <clears throat> so without hiring, um, don't, we don't want to hire more plumbers. We want to work with our plumbers and reduce the time it takes to solve, to resolve issues. So this will bring us to the next stage. And this is um, called uh, gap analysis. This is still the same um, map, but now we have to look at it. So we can see um, identify reports, identify and report incident. Yes, is a good point. Receive and log incident 
and the contact landlord. Yes, it's a good it's a good um, it's a good process. But landlord review and the landlord receive and review is it necessary? These are bureaucrats bureaucratic processes. Before landlord uh, review and uh, receive and review can take like one day or two days, and then landlord will then approve. It might take like another day to approve. Then landlord will then um, contact uh, back help uh, desk officer to notify the, the plumber. This is another process. So you're looking at all these processes that are not uh, really important, we need to identify all of them. These are the gap in the system. These are why they are having issues because there is too much bureaucracy in their system. So we need to remove as many waste as possible. And this is what is um, Lean approach is telling us. You review a, a, a situation, a process, and you re remove all the waste. Waste can be waste of time. In this regard, all this waste we are looking at is waste of time. So we need to remove all this waste. So all these ones highlighted in red color are waste. So let's say we've uh, highlighted uh, these uh, three processes. Uh, landlord receives and the review. Landlord approves, help desk uh, receive approval and then notify plumber. Let's say all these three processes are waste. We're going to remove three of them. We remove them from the from this process to to gain more time. You know, reduce time it takes to 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 fix this uh, boiler. Let's see. So now we have identified three, three ways we need to remove from this process. Then let's uh, look at our current um, state. Now, this is the current, the future state. This is how we want it to be so that we can uh, reduce time. We want to reduce it to 50%. So now identify. Uh, the incident, um, log the incident. Now we are not going to, uh, now the help desk can now represent the right of a landlord. There is no one, one you are signing, a, a landlord is bringing their property for the organization to manage. They'll give you the consent. They'll give you the authority to manage the property. So it's not all the time, um, that you need to be calling them to be. So that's it. So when there is an issue, the, the company can actually fix whatever the problem and let her give landlord the, um, the bill. So that's it. So now we are removing, going through landlord and all these things. When landlord is bringing a property to manage, the landlord should be able to trust the company to be able to take responsibilities. So now when the company receives complaint, they will just um, contact the plumber and the plumber will just move immediately to, to look at the, the incident on site and then take the normal, the necessary uh, spare parts from the store and then go fix the, the faulty uh, unit text, complete paperwork, notify the, uh, the, the customer, and then, then, then notify the, the help desk and the help desk will then notify the, the, the customer. As you can see, this is the time we save. And with this, we can be able to reduce the amount of time. If it used to be like uh, 10 days, can now be six days, which is, something that you really save a lot of money for, for, for the company. This is just 
you are not using any solution. You have not implemented any solution for the company. This is just your skills as a business analyst, you know, which is very good. You might decide to solve this problem through another way by finding a solution that can do all this thing automatically, like um, service now, that which is the best uh, solution for incident management. But we are not going to go into the now. At this stage, at this point, uh, it's beyond uh, the scope because I don't want to, to start getting confused. But I just want to pick a picture of what, how business analyst solves a problem for companies. So that is it. Gather your requirements, you analyze your requirements, and then you provide solution, and then implement the solution. So that is it. So that's the picture of how business analysis work and how a business analyst um, solves problems. So, I wanted to use this to give you a picture so that now you start making, making sense to you. Oh, is it what they do? So that's how they, it works. Because some people might not know what is business analysis. How, that is how it works. It can be, uh, their problem can be in telecommunication. It can be in real estate. It can be in a hotel. It can be in banks. It can be in hospitals can be in a government prestatus or government organization. It can be in local government, state government, federal government. It can be in the army, it can be in the police. So they, they don't have any specific place where they work. The, the business analyst doesn't have specific industry. You work everywhere. That is the beauty of a business analyst. You work everywhere. So that is it, because every organization, they use solutions. So. Now we have, you know, have this picture in our mind. What is business analyst? How does it look now? We've seen how it looks. So who is a business analyst categories? We're now going to look at uh, business analysis rules who is a business analyst, categories of uh, business analyst, job title of a business analyst, position of business analyst and organization. This is the next thing we're going to look into now. Who is a business analyst? Business analysts are responsible for discovering, synthesizing, and analyzing information from a variety of sources within an enterprise, including tools, processes, documentation, and stakeholders. You see? Is responsible, things, the things you, I want you to understand here, is responsible for discovering need to discover, that is, that is requirement gathering. Discovering, synthesizing, and analyzing. These are what you do. The business, when you do all these um, things, it's not, it includes the, the tools, like the tools here means the, the softwares, the, the systems, the process of doing things. We need to do the document, the way they document their, their documentation. And again, they are stakeholders. This is what you need to understand when it comes to, you need to understand the tools. What are the tools, what are they using? Say, so find out that you've come to so many companies, they don't have any, don't have the, they are using outdated, tools. They are not using um, latest technologies, softwares to do their, their business. And that's why their business is uh, not be moving. Look at the processes. 
just like in the housing industry we looked at now, you look at their processes. Their processes, the, the, the way they do things is it's too bureaucratic, you know? And that's why they're having that, that kind of um, issues. It takes them time to resolve their, 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 their problems. Look at documentation, how do they document things? Documentation is very important. You know, some people don't know how to do documentation. These days, they don't do that kind of documentation, writing um, a heavy document or documentation is, most of the time now documentation is more like a diagram. It's no longer those uh, heavy wordings, heavy text, you know, like you can see here, this thing is documentation. It's very simple. Once you just look at it from start, looking at the arrow, you see the way they do it, and that is documentation. It's very simple. It, documentation these days is now in diagrams. So many companies, they don't know how to use all these softwares like uh, Visio, LucidChart, Draw.io. These are some of the powerful tools they need to use for their documentations and make things easy. So the business analyst is responsible for eliciting the actual need of stakeholders, which frequently involve investigating and clarifying their expressed desire in order to determine underlying issues and causes. investigation so you need to find out what is the stakeholders eliciting elicitation means gathering data collection is the same thing with elicitation is gathering information that is elicit that is what we mean by elicitation you need to gather the actual need of stakeholders so in business analysis and software development they don't like using um, gathering, but we still use it. But in most um, textbooks or articles, what they will be using is elicitation or eliciting. So when you see elicitation, requirement elicitation is, is the same thing as requirement gathering or data collection is the same thing. So don't be confused when you see all these uh, vocabularies, just the same thing. So it's the duty of the business analyst to gather requirement from stakeholders. So that's why you need to work, know how to manage stakeholders to be able to extract this information you need from them. And when you gather this information, the next thing you investigate. Investigation means analyze the analysis. That's a data analysis. You need to analyze that investigation. You know, and while you are doing your investigation, you are trying to clarify the express to find out their desire in order to determine the underlying issues, issues, problem, to, um, to determine the underlying issues, try to find out the underlying issues and causes. That is issues and causes, that problem and what is causing the problem. The activities that business analysts perform include understanding enterprise uh, problems and goals, analyzing needs and solutions, diversifying uh, devising strategies, uh, driving changes, and uh, facilitating stakeholder co uh, collaboration, which is very important because the stakeholder, they are the people that knows what's the problem. So you need to, to know how to collaborate with them to extract these um, requirements. You know, you need to work with them very well. These are the, the, the list of things that, these are the kind of high level, high level um, responsibilities of, a business analyst.
So that's what you do. And I don't, it's not that um, a big uh, issue. So I believe you guys can do it. You have been, uh, let me uh, uh, tell you this. If you have been solving problem in your family, then you can solve uh, organizational problem. You have been, whether you need um, within your immediate family or extended family or even in the church, it's just that so many of us don't know how to document on how we solve our problems. But in company, you need to document all these things so that even if you leave the organization, another person that are coming in to take your role, we just look at um, the company record and then see what we've been doing and from then continue. That's why all this documentation, all this file, all these um, uh, strategies, that why things have been done this way. So what I'm saying is just for you to know that uh, it's not a big deal that you can do it. Now we have um, seen whom a business analyst is. And then what we do now need to do is to, to look at the categories of a business analyst. You know, just like in um, medical, medical field, uh, let's say a medical doctor, when they say a medical doctor, some people will know that he's somebody in the hospital uh, helping to treat uh, sick people. But in hospital, within, even within the medical field, we have uh, categories like you have um, you have uh, surgeons, you have uh, uh, physiotherapists, we have uh, different categories of medical practice, um, medical practice. You have um, pharmacists, they're all medical practitioners. They help to um, treat a patient it's either by administering the drug or by uh, diagnosing the patient. They're all medical practitioners. Just like that, who have, that's the way even in business analysis, that's how it works. So we have broad two major categories of business analysts. There are some more, um, more categories, but these are the major uh, two categories. We have a, a business business analyst, business business analyst, and then we have technical business analyst. Business business analysts are responsible for the research, feasibilities, justification, and analysis of the requirement for a given project. So it is the duty of the business business analysts, more especially when we are looking at um, uh, project um, life cycle. Our, our project life cycle, which we treated, we see initiate stage, define stage, execute stage, and closure stage. From define stage to closure stage, there is a business analyst. A business analyst work on each of those stages. But at the defined stage, I mean, at the initiate stage, when you're trying to initiate a project, the first business analyst there is a business business analyst. It is the duty of this business analyst to work with the stakeholders to find out 
the actual problem statement. They are the people that do the, 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 the initial requirement gathering and do the analysis, do the feasibility, do justification, and then come to a high level requirement. It is the duty of the business analyst. So they are the people that does the initial thing. Although a, a business analyst, you can, you can do everything, but what I'm saying is that when you'll be looking for a job in business analysis, you will see a rule. They will say technical business analyst. Some at times will be, you know, some people get confused. Like, what is technical business analyst? Uh, so you see digital business analyst. So this uh, this is why I'm trying to clarify you based on all this. So when you are seeing it, you know. Like with this um, analysis I've given to you now, you can equally just start working now. If somebody can you just apply for a job and say very a business analyst. Because now I've shown you how to how you can gather your requirements and they analyze your requirements and come up with high level requirements. Now we are a, a business business analyst, but it doesn't end there. Like in this, in this our um, case studies, now a business analyst can generate this um, requirement and do the gap analysis and my decide not to use this particular um, solution. It might say, okay, the best thing now is to implement a service now. Service now is a software for best software for, for now for instance management. So if they are implementing a service now, then somebody need to design the service now. And that's where the technical business analyst comes in. So the business analyst, the business business analyst will gather the requirements. This is, they will say, this is the, 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 the problem. I've looked at the company's need. I've gathered the requirements. I've analyzed the requirements. And this is the, the solution. And you do your um, uh, business case. Business case is where after all this analysis and the rest of you write a report on what you find out. The report you are writing about what you find out and then the, the uh, your recommendation because you need to make research and do recommendation. And recommend, what we call it is a business case. When you document the business case, my your role might just end there. And then it's not their duty to, to implement or not to implement, but you have done your duty, you've analyzed and you're giving them insights about their problem. So whenever they are ready to implement, they might just say, okay, stay back. Or if you are permanent in that organization, they may say, okay, uh, let's continue from um, initial stage and then start uh, to implement this uh, uh, solution. And that's where technical business analysts come in. Now, technical BA are responsible for utilizing techniques, method, tools, skills to translate business requirements to technical requirements. I told you guys earlier, that this requirement, the developers don't understand all these business requirements. You have to translate it into um, technical requirements for them to understand it. So it's now the duty of the 
technical business analyst to now start translating this business requirement into technical requirements. And technical requirements is, um, they are called the user stories. They are called user stories. They are called product backlogs. So if you look at when we are working on Jira, you see user stories, you see um, requirement, you see um, a product, a backlog. Backlog is a collection of user stories. So you see all those things there. Is the business analyst that are doing all these things. You translate it and you create it there in the Jira for the developers to come because that's where the developers come. They come in at that stage. And by then you must have translated the whole requirements. What are the requirements? The requirements, business requirements are the epic. So when you are working on Jira, you saw the epic. From epic to backlog, which is uh, user stories. And then developers will now start consuming them. They will start working on them uh, using Kanban board. And that's how it works. So that is how every works at every stage. Okay, let's um, look at uh, business BA. Deliverables of business BA. As a business BA, you get the project brief. What is project brief? Project brief is a project mandate. You've heard about it during project management, project mandate. That's why I say that business and they work with project managers. Then, you see business case, just like I said that is a report. When you finish your analysis, when you finish your data collection, your analysis, you have to write a report and then make a recommendation. It's called business case. Then you see project charter. We discover, we discuss project charter. Uh, during um, project management. That's where you document everything about the project. Business analysts, they work with stakeholders and project managers to create project charter. That's where they find the boundaries of that project. Cost and financial derivation. As a business analyst, any solution that you are recommending for the organization, you need to break down the cost and financial analysis. You need to do the cost benefit analysis. You need to show them that this is the cost of this, how much is going to take to implement every solution you are recommending. You can't just say, uh, I think uh, service now is uh, good. Or uh, you say, I think uh, it's better to implement um, Salesforce uh, CRM uh, to uh, Microsoft Dynamics. You need to break it down. Why is it that way? Why should they implement um, uh, Salesforce instead of Microsoft? You need to show, is it because of the cost? How much is it going to take to implement Microsoft? And how much is it going to take to implement um, 
service now? Is it within the, the budget? Is this something we can afford? What are the cost benefits? You need to do cost benefit analysis. Cost benefit analysis is the cost and the benefits. Any project you are, you are looking at the cost and the benefit. When the cost outweigh the benefit, then it doesn't make sense. The benefits must you know, outweigh the cost or, or be at the optimal level. These are the things. These are the duties of uh, business PA. They are the people that work on project at this stage. Business requirement documentation, I will say that about the benefits realization document, that's cost benefit analysis. Prioritize the requirement. They are the people that prioritize the requirements using a Moscow analysis. Moscow analysis, you need to, to say that, yeah, <coughs> is um uh, it must have this, it must not have this, and uh, it could have this and it wouldn't have this. That's the uh, most canonized. So every all the, the requirement that you've um, generated after analysis, you need to prioritize it according to the uh, importance they are to the organization. Then you need to document the assist and to be processed. Just like I showed you guys in the process map, you need to be documented in a design, with a diagram. You need to show it like that. People need to, to see uh, your diagram as this and to be processed. It must, it's a must in business analysis. And the policy management document, there's like a policy in the organization. They are the people that does the policy within any process, any product, business analyst does all the, the policies. If like uh, they need to document um, like data compliance, like GDPR, yeah, data compliance policy. These are the duties of business. They do the documentation. They tell you how to use their, your, your data to make sure that uh, they are not uh, uh, breaching any data protection issues. It's the duty of business analysts, they do all these things. These are deliverables, they used to do all these things. And to do all these, to implement all these deliverables, there is a technique. You can see at this right hand, there is, these are techniques you need to use to do all these things. It's called a PESL. If this PESL is, uh, use it to analyze stakeholders, you know. Uh, most, you use it to analyze the uh, requirement. SWOT, use it to analyze the, the strengths, weakness, and the uh, threats, opportunities. Requirement gathering, say something about requirement gathering, is a technique for gather, generating, is a requirement elicitation technique for gathering their requirement from the stakeholder. Quantitative analysis, data analysis, there are so many of them we are going to meet. So we are going to look at all these techniques in details as we move on. So we are, going, we are not going to, to rush them. It is just highlight, I'm just highlighting on them. We are going to take them one by one. There are so many techniques involved. I can't you know, there are so many of them, but we just pick the ones uh, that are more vital, more important. And when you keep proceeding in your journey as a business analyst, you then know which one is better for you to use based on what your company is looking for. So you see, as is to be process mapping, data analysis, these are the things the documents and techniques um, needed within the role as a business business analyst. 
Yeah, if you know all these things, the main thing is to know what you need to do within every section or every segment. Now we have listed all these things. So if you are getting a job, you already know what you are going to do. You already know the techniques. So when you are looking into the techniques, then you understand how to use the techniques. So when you know how to use the techniques to do the a part, to to deliver a particular deliverable, that's it. That's what you do as a business analyst. It's not a rocket science. So let's look at technical BA. What they do, and don't say that you are ensure that you prefer. A technical BA to business BA. We don't do that. A business analyst is a business analyst. You learn everything so that whichever way they come, if they, they employ you, some company might not tell you they are looking for technical or business BA. They will just employ you as a business analyst. And whichever, uh, whichever way it pleases them, they will assign you a role. They can assign you a role to go and do technical BA job or they can assign you a role to go and do a business BA job. This is mainly in a large organization. So, well, we need to divide and um, share a lot of uh, responsibilities. But in small organization, you find out that you do the business BA role, you do the uh, technical BA role, you equally do the project manager role. And that's where you come in as a hybrid, you know? So, because now why is hybrid is that most startup companies, mainly startup companies, these are the companies that are looking for high, uh, freelancers. You know, so if you are, a hybrid a business analyst and project manager. These are the kind of people they are looking for because they want, because they don't have that kind of money like uh, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, Google. So they are looking to get a lot in one person. So they will be looking for people like you. And these they are the people that goes um, beyond the across country, geog across geography, to look for valuable um, IT professional that can, can give them what they want at a, at a cheaper rate. So let's look at the role of a technical BA. As a technical BA, this is what they do, use cases. Use cases is a case where they use a product. If there is a problem, you look at use cases. Why is it not working? Where have they used this product? Or where have they, are they planning to use it? So they are called use cases. You need to draw, um, as a technical BA, you make um, use of uh, use case diagrams using um, Lucid Chart or Draw.io or Visio. Mockup. Mockup is, um, is, is more of the same thing with wireframe. Is a kind of drawing a, a diagram of a product that you want to implement. For instance, you are planning to implement a mobile app. You need to draw how that mobile app is going to look in a diagram before you hand it over to, to the developer. So all the scripts, if the mobile app is going to have uh, two screen or two pages or even website, it's going to have like uh, 10 pages. A business analyst, you need to create all the 10 pages 
need to wireframe all the 10 pages of that website or uh, the mock-up of all the that uh, 10 pages, how it's going to look. You can use your hand to draw it in the paper, but it's not acceptable. So that's will have um, uh, so many software, but you can use the, the, this uh, vcudraw.io and the um, Lucid chart to draw all these things. That's why I introduce you people to, to that earlier. Now you have used it to do your project breakdown structure. So many more assignments will be coming. You have to be doing a lot of drawing, a lot of uh, diagrams as, um, as we proceed. We have uh, personas. Personas, the kind of, uh, when you are writing your user stories, use personas to personalize a user story. If, uh, um, for instance, a user story, we've, we've not gone that, but it, the way it looks like as a user, I want to do this so that I can achieve this. As a, a customer, I want to log into uh, my banking app so that I can check my bank account. That is a user story. So the persona is then you see as, as that is who, as a customer, it can be a customer, it can be as a, it can be a project manager. It, so when you start when you say persona, but we are going to come to all those things where we explain them in details with diagrams. But for now, I'm just highlighting on them. Then have test cases. Test cases is when you create um, a user story, you need to create a test because a user story is a piece of uh, functionality or feature you are trying to achieve in a software. So when you create a, a, a software, a, a feature, you need to test it after uh, producing that uh, feature. You need to test it to make sure that it's working. So every, soft, every user story needs to have uh, a test case. So have test cases, test scripts, data flow diagram, swim lane, we have um, swim lane is um, you use swim lane in a um, process chart, a process map. Let me show you an example of swim lane. This is swim lane. You see swim lane, this particular swim lane is for customer. You can see customer here. You see another swim lane is for desk, help desk. Another swim lane is for plumber. Another swim lane is for, it's just a way of categorizing um, areas, maybe operators in a diagram. You see, this, this is a, um, a customer is an operator, a help desk is an operator, a plumber is an operator, a store is an operator because there's someone, somebody manages the store. So the activities, you need to differentiate the activity so that we know when a process is moving from one operator to another operator. And when it's, like you can see here, you move to, to store, now back to plumber. So these are swim lanes. You need to know how to use this swim lane very well because all your, most of your diagram will be having swim lane so that when the management is looking at your diagram, they will not struggle. You make things very easy for the management, the executives. So why, that's why we are doing all this, to satisfy them. They, they are the stakeholders. Everything we are doing is to impress them. So these are the swim lane. So we go back to our 
technical BA. So we have a user journey. User journey, technical BA need to understand user journey. User journey is how a customer navigates from one process or to one process while trying to assess your product. That is the user journey. If a customer wants to buy a product in your e-commerce or in Jankara e-commerce, from logging into the, the website and uh, looking at all the, the product categories, from product categories, you choose a particular category. If it's clothing category, you choose clothing category. From clothing category, you choose a um, ladies category. From ladies category, you choose ladies suit. From ladies suit, you select a white suit or black suit. From black suit, you add it to the basket. When you add it to the basket, then you move to checkout. From checkout, you pay. From when you pay, then you start um, expecting your delivery. These are user journey. That's how, but all these things you need to create it in a diagram. When you're planning to create um, uh, maybe a well, Jankara e-commerce, you need to create how um, a customer will be navigating. That is call it user journey. That is the job of a business analyst, a technical BA. Then process mapping. Process mapping, you've seen process mapping when we are trying to solve the problem of the, um, the real estate company. All those process from one process to another process, these are processes. You call it process map. If you hear process, might be hearing process map. The first time I, the first time I, he, I heard process map, I said, what does that mean? Can I do this? But I find out that it's something so, so easy and uh, fun, fun to do. These are process. It's, see, this diagram is a map. You know, it's a map. Just like if you come to, a geographical map. This is um, a this current state map. They are map, and in this map we have a process. From this is where the process starts, from here to here to here to here, you see the arrow will be directing you till the end. That is the end of a process. That's called a process map. You see this one process map. This one process map. So these are things you'll be doing as a, a technical BA. We do a lot of process map. Then not only process, it doesn't end only in process map. We have a data mapping. As a business analyst, you need to map data very well. When we come to to, to data map, initially, when I was starting, I thought that um, uh, process map mapping and data mapping, is, they are not the same thing. They are two different things. Data mapping is uh, during data migration. Data migration is things business analysts do. Or uh, data integration. Okay. When we are starting this uh, course, you people saw the challenges I had with um, GC. I integrated GC with uh, our website so that we can share data. It will help us to share data from um, our website and the, the GC just like we are sharing data with um, Zoom. And equally, you can see we, we integrated our website with um, um, YouTube so that we can share data with YouTube and our website. This is uh, what we call data integration. 
And during this data integration, you need to map out how this data is going to move before you start the implementation, either from the uh, source and to target, from where you want that data to come from and where do you want the data to go. These are how data map comes. So we have a lot of tools for data mapping, but we are not going to go into details. All this I'm doing is uh, highlighting. Then these are the techniques. UML, that is a behavioral diagram. This diagram is, uh, this technique is called the universal modeling language. This, um, all this um, wireframing, uh, process mapping, all of them, they all comes under uh, modeling languages. Yeah, we call it model language. It's a language, you know, that's it. Uh, requirement engineering. Requirement engineering is a technique. When you are talking about requirement, gathering requirement, that's the eliciting requirement, analyzing requirement, is a technique. You know, call it requirement engineering. Then data analysis. Data analysis, when you're analyzing data, you either through data mapping, and uh, data integration. Uh, everything you need to do with data is called data analysis. So either you are cleaning, trying to, if data is dead, you're trying to clean data, you're trying to model data, you're trying to, to understand data in a, in a bigger way, which can be, is either you're trying to understand that, So um, I was in data analysis. So data analysis is a process of understanding data right from uh, getting data, <laughs> extracting data, analyzing. Another one is um, entity relationship architecture. Then we have behavioral driven development. Then we have a text driven development and the gacking syntax approach. All these ones, uh, some of them are, are complex and uh, they're out of uh, the scope of uh, uh, this. Uh, course for now, but I just highlighted them because they are part of the techniques. The next thing we need to look into is a job title of a business analyst. Now we have uh, two basic uh, categories of business analysts. You can, they can call you any kind of name, but what I want you to know is that when you hear any of this name, you know that is a business analyst they are referring to, or maybe you are trying to look for a job and you see all these uh, titles, you say, no, no, it's not for me. That there is not a business, they are business analysts. You can be called a business architect. You can be called business system analyst. You can be called a data analyst. You can be called enterprise analyst. You can be called management consultant. You can be called process analyst. You can be called product manager. You can be called product owner. You can be called requirement engineer. 
you can be called system analyst. All these uh, business analysts, all of them are business analysts. So you can see there are so many names. But the issue is that one, the only difference here is that so many of them are more, you know, niched. Like data analysts might not be involved with a lot of uh, requirement gathering, requirements analysis, or data analysts can just be working on data alone. You are, you are not uh, interested in um, software development. They don't, uh, data analysts don't do software development. And uh, business architect, they might be just there for trying to understand the business need and finding solution. Business system analysts might just be working on systems, mainly integrating systems. They are more of uh, system integration, working on system integration, data sharing, data communication within uh, different enterprise. That might be the rule, but they are business analysts. Enterprise analysts, my job be working on enterprise, enterprise like um, um, CRM solution, like, ERM solution, these are the enterprise. Uh, Microsoft, Dynamics, uh, Salesforce, CRM, Microsoft, all these applications, they are called enterprise. Management consultant, the same thing would be as a business analyst. Any of these things, you are a management consultant. Process analyst. Thanks in a big organization, they might just give it name process analysis. Your role, your role will just be mapping out, process mapping. That's what you, you might have up to uh, 10 process, ma uh, uh, process um, uh, flow to map out in a week. So your own job is just mapping out processes. You know, so that's some of them are called process map. So in a big organization, you might not even have time. Doing the only process map is a big job. A product owner or product manager might be managing a particular product. For instance, where you have so many companies that might have so many products, like in Microsoft, they have so many products. You might just be specialized in managing a particular product, like um, Office 365, knowing everything about that pro product, how to improve on that product, resolving customers' complaint on that product, how to, that's their own about product, working with customers, finding their need on a particular product of a company's product. That might be be your own uh, job, a product manager. And product owner is when you are starting, when you, as a product manager, when you find out all these issues in a product, then you need to work on those issues. It becomes a project. What the customers want, what is their complaint? So, if they you find out that customers, they want a new integration or they want a new um, feature in a product, then that feature, you can take that feature to develop that feature and it becomes a product. You become the owner of that product. A product can be, let me say, you have a static website, just normal website. And all of a sudden, you decided to be selling product in that your website. You need to, you decided to add the e-commerce on that website. That e-commerce becomes a product. 
And then you that is going about trying to gather the requirement of that particular e-commerce, you become the product owner. It's still a business analyst. The requirement engineer is a business analyst. Just like I said about requirement engineering, requirement gathering, requirement analysis. It's still a business analyst. Then system analyst. System analyst, my job, their, their, own, their own job is just about system, analyzing how system work, organizational system. If you come to an organization, they have a lot of system, cloud-based system, cloud-based application. Their own is understanding how the system works. It's more of a, a business system analyst. They are almost the same thing. They are the same thing. So all these rules are within business analysts. There are job titles. All of them are business. So you can see what you can do as a business analyst. They are too much. It's uncountable. So then if you come to the organization, let's look at um, how business analyst fits in, in an organization. Uh, looking at the organizational organogram, organizational structure. Where is the business analyst? Where do you fit in? Okay, this is the company director. And uh, this is the pro program manager under company director. Then you see a lot of head, head of projects, PMO analyst manager, head of uh, business change, uh, head of communication, head of marketing, testing manager. And from there, you keep breaking them down. That is, uh, we've done breakdown structure. That's why this is organizational breakdown structure. This is no longer a project breakdown structure. So you see project manager under head of project. You see project manager project uh, manager to project um, coordinator and uh, support. So under PMO analyst, you see PMO analyst, uh, one PMO analyst, two PMO analyst, three. Then under head of business change, you see business analyst one, business analyst two. So, just like I said, our business analysis is the change, is the change agent, is the change manager. You are coming there to bring change. So you are working under um, change management. You are bringing change to the organization, transformation. And you can see the business analysts, they are on the same capacity with the project manager. You can see it and the PMO analysts, they are at the same level. Although in a project, the, the project manager might be the head of project, everybody, because we only have one leader in a project, but business analyst capacity, even the salary skill and the rate, they are in the same level with project manager. So that is it. So, and uh, this is where we are going to stop today on uh, business um, analysis. This is just the, uh, the beginning stage of this uh, uh, course. It's going to be detailed. We are going to do a lot of um, practical, a lot of designing. We are going to you be using all these tools like um, it's time for you to go and know how to use um, these uh, softwares like uh, Lucid Charts and uh, Draw.io. These two of them, you are going to know how to use them very well because we are going to be doing a lot of diagram, a lot of uh, process mapping, a lot of uh, flow charting, a lot of swim lane. So.
when you understand how to do all those things, it means your, your worries as a business analyst is almost gone because once you understand how to do most of those the diagram, these are the major issues. They are, big, they are the, the major issues in business analysis. analysis. Understanding them, uh, how uh, business and how to document these businesses, these are the major thing. So that's why I decided to bring this so that you have a look. It's not too difficult. You just understand it. Do the assist, you map out, you do the gap analysis, and you provide solution. And then you go and start divide this, designing the solution. So these are how it is. I think this is the introductory part of business analysis. And then tomorrow, we are going to start looking at uh, uh, stakeholders, who are the stakeholders in business analysis. And uh, we'll then lo look at um, skills in business analysis. And then we'll start moving down. But for today, oh, it's just, uh, I'll call it that we've just uh, done the introdu introduction. I've introduced you guys to business anal analysis. So I can say, welcome to the world of business analysis. So, And now I need to communicate with you guys in terms of question and answer. So you have any question, now we have to address the question. Yes, yes, Ruth. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good evening once again. Uh, good evening. Okay. So I, I want to come, I don't know if it's right to ask this question at this age, at this um, stage. I want, the, on the flow chart you, you showed us, um, uh, uh, because we are reviewing uh, the case study of um, fixing of detective boiler, that's for a real mm -hmm. estate. So if you, if you, assuming you're using other case studies, like maybe in a hospital, do I'm just concerned about um, the, the uh, that's the review and the logging incident by the landlord. If we are using uh, other case studies, maybe like a hospital, now does this um, term change changes to the stakeholders or uh, other? Um, uh, we use another term for that. I don't know if you understand what I'm. Uh, yeah, use the, if it's a hospital, like I said, landlord is landlord. Yeah. There is no need okay. of uh, hiding the. There is no technical. If you are in a hospital, you use company uh, hospital director. Use, use medical doctor, use nurse. If uh, you are in a, in a restaurant, you're using the, the case in a restaurant, then you use the chef, you use the, the, the customers, you use the, these are the kind of things. So you don't, uh, there's, no, there's no need of, in business and your requirement need to be clear. You don't need to be ambiguous. When you are referring to something, refer to the, the something. So that's why here yeah, is time you use the, the is a real estate, you use landlord, you use tenant, you use um, plumber. These are the people, uh, help desk. Everybody knows that company have help desk. Uh, customers, there's a customer's uh, management. So you use the simple term that will not confuse anybody. Okay, sir. Okay, I get it now. Thank you. All right. Uh, Graham. Okay, good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for today's class. At least I've been, you know, I've been coming, I, I, I've been coming through, I, I coming across um, terms like product owner product owner like when i when i try to apply for freelancing jobs i see job posting product 
owner. I actually did not know what it meant. I had a different meaning of it until this class today. So I, I, I thank you for that. I've really learned new things. But I want to ask a question. Business analysis and business analytics, uh, they, do, they, do they relate? Because from from the way from your teaching now they are almost like it's almost like to me it's almost like they do the same function but i do not understand why they are being separated as well so that's what i'm asking if they if they are related or something business analytics is yes please is inside business analysis business analytics are tools to do business analysis job Business analytics are tools like uh, Power BI for use in reading data, trying to understand, understand data, use it to model data. Business analytics like uh, business intelligence, business insights, trying to have insights about the business, like the customers, uh, customer's journey or company performance. You need to to, to understand the company data. So business analytics are mainly the tools used by data analysts. They are mainly the people that are using data uh, business analytics. So business analysis, anal an analysis is a big family. All these things come under data analysis. They all come under, they all under business analysis. Everything, they are all under business analysis. But when you start breaking them down, that's where the, the data analysis, all those things started emerging. But they're all business analysts, you know. So that is it. Very soon, I will start uh, a session on uh, data analysis, uh, but it's not going to be on this uh, program because it, it's, it's deep on its own. So that's when you start seeing um, Power BI, Tableau, uh, you see R programming, you start seeing um, artificial intelligence, all these things. Uh, you started hearing about big data. All these things are, are under data analysis. And most of these uh, technologies to understand data mainly is called the uh, data analytics is a, a business intelligence. Another way for data analytics is a business intelligence. And business intelligence is still under business analysis, but they are more of understanding, doing data modeling and data analysis for decision making. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Ubong. Ubong. Okay. So I think uh, we don't have any more. Uh, don't have any more. Okay, prudence. Good evening, sir. Yeah, good evening. Um, what my question is that I don't know if technical business analysts do the same job as the programmers. Are they the same as the programmers or you can differentiate the two? Programmers are developers. They are, these are two different uh, um, entities. They are not the same thing. A technical BAs, they design the solution. That's what their job, they design it. When we talk about designing solution is when you start uh, uh, using wireframe, um, doing um, user stories, writing, um, uh, doing a user use cases, you know, use case diagrams, all these things are designing. All these things you are doing is for the developers, which is the programmers, 
for them to understand the business requirements. So you well, when, when, you, when you, after doing all the design, then the developers, the developers are programmers. So these are the people, because all these solutions, all these softwares are code. They are all in programming languages, you know. So business analysts don't know how to program. It's not a program. So you cannot, you can be a, good, a, a business analyst without even knowing how to write a single code. Is that, so that is it. So, but there is a, a language, there is a, a meeting point where programmers and business analysts, where they meet. They meet our technical requirements. So, you should know how to write technical requirements. And they themselves, some of the programmers, they don't know how to write, um, they don't know how to do business analyst job. They, some of them, all they know is when they see that um, uh, uh, user stories, they know what to do. But to go start doing uh, all this research, they don't know. But once you give them what they, they should do, once they see, so that's why, we need to translate it to their own language for them to work on. So that is the meeting point. So the business analyst is a, is a midfielder. It's just like, for instance, an English language and a French language. The business analyst can speak English and can speak French. So a bit of French. So, you gather our requirement from the English, you translate it to, to, to French, and the French guy will then start working on it. So that's how the business analysis in between. So you might not know how to code, but you know you know how to write requirement that will be translated into coding, into code, which is software. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Now yeah. I understand it. So don't be scared that. Uh, we're going to drag you into programming, but it's good to be a programmer. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, so do we have any other question or I would call it a night? Okay, so I think Obong is still raising hands. So if you are not raising, if you don't have anything to do, bring your hands down. Hello, sir. You are far away from your speaker. So come closer to your speaker. I can hear you, but it's okay. not. Uh... So is it better now? Yes. Okay, good evening, sir. Yeah, well done. Yes, thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Yes, though what I have to ask is almost close to what she asked, but I actually wanted to know in business analysis, I think what I understand is before any project is being executed at all, no matter how little, uh, graphs and maps have to be drawn. Is that correct? Before anything is done at all in business analysis, it has to be presented in graphs as you are showing us. It's not, it's not graph, it's diagram. Diagrams, yes, and charts. Yes. Like all this workflow, yes, work breakdown. Yeah. Okay. Yes, you need to you need to model your yeah your, your, you need to map out what you need to do in a diagram for people mm -hmm. to see because management all they need to see for instance the the CEO of a company that have a lot of things and or a director they've got a lot of things and you, you you want to bring a a a twenty page documentation about uh, what you need to do. That's not gonna work. So you need a diagram. In this uh, diagram, I showed you this uh, diagram. If I want to write all this all the, the a detailed requirement of that diagram, it's going to be like twenty page uh, report. But you can see. I just diagram everything in three um, diagram, okay. which anyone can just look at it and understand. 
So this is, is very important because uh, is is a is a key is a key factor is a key um, deliverable is a key skill in a business analysis. You must know how to do a diagram. So that's why I introduced you people early. It's not a, a difficult thing for the fact that you guys have done um, process mapping. Um, I mean, uh, work breakdown structure. Uh -huh. So you can do other things as well. So it's not dif difficult. So you, you are going to go back and be producing more, more diagram. But for now, I'm not giving you guys any assignment. Let us keep understanding it first. All right. Then. Yeah. Thank you. So at this point, it's the um, think. It's nine o'clock here and it should be 10 o'clock. So the time is up. It's 12 hours uh, lecture and I'll see you guys um, tomorrow. <laughs>